So that would be half the period time. How long is half a period? Well, only a few days probably. Papa Flamby's Earth and Calendar. Good morning fellow physicists, welcome back to another video. So we are back at doing some physics here on Papa Flam's advent calendar and this video right here exactly is the reason why I have stopped doing physics videos because I tried recording this piece of garbage <laughs> ages ago numerous times and it didn't turn out any good at all and it was quite depressing. That's why I stopped a bit doing physics videos and I wanted to get back to physics videos after introducing second order homogeneous linear differential equations, but I didn't have the chance to, to do so, but we are still going to do this today. Fuck it, we are doing it. So let's go ahead and get started. So the only thing we're given today is this weird looking potential right here. You can derive this using Newton's shell theorem, I guess. This is just the gravitational potential of a sphere with uniform density. We're going to assume that the Earth is a sphere with uniform density. Okay, and we are going to think about it. What would happen if you would dig a tunnel straight through Earth right here, just like this, where capital R is the, well, radius of the Earth, then we have capital M, mass of the Earth. M, small m, is the mass of an object, and R is our, well, distance to the middle point of the Earth changing over time. So this right here is our time dependent variable. And I shit you not, this thing right here is a conservative potential. So why not use something we have derived before, a little rule for conservative forces and thus conservative potentials. Namely that we can derive a force with respect to R. Namely by taking the derivative of our potential with respect to R. And then we already have a force because a force is nothing but, well, m times r double dot, mass times acceleration. And well, why not differentiate this right here and see what we get. You see this part right here is just going to vanish because it's independent of small r. But if we differentiate that, dragging down the two, well, what do we get in the end? This right here is equivalent to saying that, well, we have negative g times capital M, small m over well, 2 is going to cancel out, r to the third power, and then we have, um, yeah, you see uh, this negative and this negative is going to cancel out, but we get this negative to the front, that's why I put a negative here. We have this little small r, being equal to m times r double dot. And also the cool thing is, if we are really close to a planet, we can replace this right here somehow using a little rule, gravitational force, namely that if we have the, well, the general gravitational force of a planet, this is just g times big mass, small mass over r squared. But if we are really close to a planet, it's just m times g. You might know of this. And you see, m times g is now nothing but this right here. So we can just replace all those parts with m times g a little bit. So that's equivalent to saying we have m r double dot being equal to, okay, negative sign stays. This and that and r square is going to go away, but we are going to get an, a g right here as a little replacement, g over r, one r is going to be left. And also we have this r right here and our small m. But the cool thing is our mass of the object, we don't want it to be equal to zero, so we can just cancel it out on both sides. And now we are going to get a nice little differential equation second order, that's why I wanted to make the theory video on it first. Namely, that r double dot plus, we can bring it to the other side, g over r, capital R, times small r, is equal to zero. And well, we can solve this by using a simple ansatz. I have introduced ansatzes before, so why not just do this real quick. And then let's see if we can solve this new system down here. So why not replace our r with something exponential, for example, c times the exponential function e to the lambda t. That's what you call an ansatz. Watch my theory videos on differential equations to see where this comes from. We can differentiate this twice. So namely only the lambda is going to get dragged down. So we are going to get r double dot is nothing but lambda squared c times e to the lambda t. And well, we can plug this stuff down here into our differential equation to get c times e to the lambda t lambda squared 
plus g over r c e to the lambda t is nothing but we can factor out the c times e to the lambda t by the way we don't want c to be equal to zero so let's factor it out c times e to the lambda t times okay so we have lambda squared plus g over r it's nothing but zero right now and you see c is nothing but some positive or negative constant complex or real it, it really doesn't quite matter, e can go to zero, so the only way this equation can be equal to zero is when this right here is equal to zero. So we can conclude that lambda squared plus g over r has to be equal to zero. Now we can bring this to the other side, take the root, lambda 1 and 2, two solutions can be either positive or minus, square root of negative g over r. G over R is going to be strictly positive, so one part in the third right here is positive, so let's bring square root of negative 1, namely I, to the outside to get two possible solutions. Lambda 1, nothing but, well, positive I times square root G over R, or we have lambda 2 being nothing but negative I square root G over R. And I want you guys to notice if you do some dimensional analysis, G over R in dimensions is nothing but meters over second squared over meter so meters is going to cancel out so this is one over second squared taking the square root is one over second so this right here is nothing but some angular frequency because you see you are going to see it in the end result we are going to oscillate back and forth all the time so when you jump down here you are going to be here but you are going to be tracked up once again to the middle of earth up here down here up here down here blah 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 so we are oscillating all the time, so we can rewrite this as i times omega or negative i times omega. And the cool thing is now we can construct our auxiliary equation, which we can basically solve using some initial values, meaning our r with respect to t. It's now going to consist of some constant c1. Well, yeah, I'm going to write it out at first, so e to the i times omega plus c2 e to the negative i times omega. And if we assume those constants right here to be complex, for example, we can play around with this expression a bit more using Daddy Euler and stuff like this. Sine of omega plus, uh, cosine of omega plus i times sine of omega, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do a theory video on that, I swear by God. But we can rewrite this as some new constant times cosine omega times t plus some other constant, b times the sine omega times t. If you have ever had physics courses, then you might know where this comes from. And now let's think about what our initial values could possibly be. Well, if we start up here, well, we don't really have any velocity. We are standing on top, so we are not jumping at the beginning in the tunnel, only at the first second, for example. So our initial values, for example, are dot, of zero is just zero, so our velocity at the start is zero. But also, if we stand up here, our position at the time zero is well, the whole radius of the Earth. So we also know that r of zero is nothing but our whole radius. So why not differentiate this right here and plug zero in and see what we get? Meaning, r dot of t is now nothing but, so negative a times omega sine omega times t plus, and now we have b times omega, and then we have the cosine of omega times t. If we plug zero into here, so r dot of zero being equal to zero, we get this part is going to vanish, meaning we are going to get well, cosine of one, b times omega. But our frequency can't be equal to zero actually, so b needs to be equal to zero. And I don't have any space left, I'm going to see on the next blackboard. <laughs> Okay, so we are close to being done. You see, we've got this right here, but we've got another initial value. But you can already see what our a is going to be because our a is going to be the amplitude in our um, phase space of our differential equation. Meaning the amplitude is the highest point we can basically reach right here in terms of meters or kilometers whatsoever. And this is basically up here, this is our r. So it really doesn't quite matter if you plug zero into here, r of zero, this is capital R, where well, cosine of zero is just one, so we end up with a. So we just found out, calculating it, that our observation was right. Our amplitude is just our r radius of the Earth. And meaning, 
our r with respect to t is nothing but r times the cosine of omega times t. And this right here is just the free harmonic oscillator. It's just like you would let a spring go without any friction or anything. You are going to get this also, or a pendulum without any friction. It just can so happen that you have a little phase shift in here and that you get a sine wave, for example. It doesn't quite matter, but do you know what also would be cool? So we have solved this differential equation, but we have our omega given. Why not calculate the time it takes us to go through from here to here, so one time through the Earth. So if we take a look in the phase portrait, would be something like this right here. Okay, we have a cosine wave from here to there. And well, we would get half the period if we just would go to pi over two. So this right here would be a full period. We are going down here and then up here. So down here and then up here once again. So this would be the full period, but we only want to see how long it takes to go from here to there. So that would be half the period time. How long is half a period? Well, only a few days, probably. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. So, you see, we calculate half the period time. Well, what's the period? This is nothing but 1 over the frequency. So 1 over 2 times the frequency. But we only have our, well, angular frequency given. But how can we express the angular frequency? Well, it's nothing but the frequency in the phase space over a circle, you could say. So 2 times pi times our frequency. Dividing by 2 pi, we are going to get that this is 1 over 2 times, well, omega over 2 pi. 2 and 1 over 2 is going to cancel out. 2 pi over omega, but what is omega? Square root g over r, so taking the reciprocal, is going to end us up with pi times the square root, well, r over g. Doing dimensional analysis, we are going to end up with seconds in the end, so the reciprocal of our angular frequency. And if you calculate this, you are going to be roughly at, like hell I know, 42 minutes or something. This has been quite a while since I have done this. Yeah, like, like 42 minutes it would take you to get from one point of the Earth to another. So from, I don't know, Germany to China. China! Yeah, and that's basically it. I'm not good at making physics videos anymore, but I hope it was still a bit fun for you guys to watch. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, recommend the channel if you like. And well, up until the next video, have a flammable advent day, I guess. See ya!